Owing to the nexus between escalating insecurity and mining activities, the federal government announced a ban on mining activities in Zamfara State in January 2019 and constituted an anti-illegal mining team to ensure compliance with the ban. To complement the efforts of the federal government, the Zamfara State government is inaugurating an anti-illegal mining committee. For Governor Belo Matawale, the setting up of the committee is imperative due to continuous illegal mining activities despite the ban, which is counterproductive. We recall that I personally spearheaded the arrest of some Chinese national conducting illegal mining activities in Bukwim local government area in April 2020. In order to curb illegal mining, the federal government has already established an anti-illegal mining squad. The community we are inaugurating this today will therefore complement the effort of the federal government team while operating on the basis of following terms of reference. The chairman of the Anti-Illegal Mining Committee, Abdullahi Shinkafi, promises to discharge their responsibilities in accordance with the law. We are assuring the good people of Zamfara State for the governor to find us worthy of to serve in this committee. We are not going to let him down and let the good people of Zamfara down. But I'm calling all sundries, traditional rulers, other members of the public to desist from any activities of illegal mining are to comply with the suspension of the mining activities by the federal government in Nigeria. The committee's terms of reference are to identify mining sites in the state, their owners, and advise the state government on mining related issues. Okay, so there you have a little bit of background on what's going on, but that uh, linked to uh, insecurity in different parts, certain parts of the country. But we'll shed some light on that, hopefully, uh, as we progress. Professor Benga Okola joins us now. He's a professor of geology, University of Ibadan. He's also uh, chair of FG's Mining Roadmap Implementation Strategy Team at MIST. Good morning, Prof. Thank you for joining us today. Good morning. Morning, okay. Chamberlain. How are you? Well, good. Yeah, thank you. Clearly? Yes, we can hear you. You know, when the government did announce that no-fly zone, many couldn't connect the dots uh, at the time. But then we've seen the state government in Zanfar also take further steps, saying that they had about 100,000 artisanal miners before that announcement was made. But it turns out that uh, illegal mining appears to be a thing, and there's so many perspectives to insecurity. So being in that federal government committee, so to give us, uh, from your perspective, what is the picture? What are we dealing with here? Well, um, thank you, Chamberlain. I think we are dealing with symptoms rather than really tackling the cause. And when you're dealing with symptoms and you're treating symptoms, it's sometimes continuous until you actually get to know and understand the cause and tackle it from the cause. We need to begin to understand the narrative of mining in this country. It's very important. Mining is a knowledge-based industry. It is not an ad hoc industry where you come in just and go with interventions, or interventions, or I mean policies and actions. Yes, actions in between can help. But I think what can solve this situation is to really go back to the basics and to the foundation. Uh, there is an African proverb, if you will permit me, that says, yes, somebody who is a uh, physically challenged at the limbs, at the lower limbs, is carrying a load on his head. And then the load at the top is crooked and it's almost falling off. And you say, hey man, this your uh, load is crooked and it's, it's slighted and it's almost falling off. You say, look, you're only looking at the load. You're not looking at the crooked limbs 
the law. So that one has to be sorted out before the load can be straightened out. So we need to go back to actually the concept of planning properly. There is a roadmap, and which the federal government is also uh, implementing. And I think they, they, they are doing it well, but we need to do more. When state governments now start having I mean, uh, action committees or tax forces, it's going to be endless. And I want to say this, if you look around us now, the concept of artisanal mining, illegal mining, is so complex now that it's almost getting to a breaking point. And that is the truth. Let's go to all the states. It's all in Zamfara. Go to Osho State, where there is um, some rush for gold mining there or even some other states, even on the plateau, even in other states, the, 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 the issue of artisanal mining is really being misunderstood. What we're having now, and of course, it's playing out in Zamfara clearly, as if there has not been any issue, of course, and it has really maybe got them to the neck, there wouldn't have been some kind of uh, intervention at this point. What is happening is that what we're having is some kind of scavenger mining. This is not even artisanal mining. These are people who just come, they are not trained, they spoil the ground, they take what they want to take, there is no planning, there is no exploration. What I think will solve this issue is for the Zamfara State, Oshun State, and all of the states that are actually involved in mining, to Nigeria. We need to understand this. One, oh, this um, uh, mining is in the exclusive. Even though the, the signal the appears to yeah. fade intermittently, but uh, we hope you can still hear us. Okay. You know, so uh, are you suggesting well, that. I'm hearing you clearly. I'm hearing nice. you clearly. Nice. Okay, great. Uh, are you suggesting that state governments or the committee set up by Zamfara State is going to be across purposes with that of federal government, and as such, there would have been no need. For Zamfara State to set up that committee? There wouldn't have been any need for Zamfara State to set up that committee if things are done properly. There wouldn't have been any need. There is an artisanal, uh, the, the federal government has a, a, a major artisanal mining department in the ministry. There, is, there are programs for artisanal mining. They need to just link up with what the federal government is doing. And they need to, there's the need for synergy. There's a need for synergy. There's a lot of insecurity in that area, partly, partly, I'm not saying wholly, partly due to indiscriminate mining. And what they need to do is to link up what is the root cause of this. How, who are the license owners? Let them link up with the mining cadaster office. This is where it starts. Who are the genuine mining owners? I mean, license owners. And if you have the license owners, are they really doing what they should be doing? Are they doing exploration or they are doing the real mining? There are different categories of licenses. The so, exploration um, mine license is different from the artisanal small scale yeah. mining license. They should get them organized. And they should Does that suggest who are really involved in doing both. Because the, there's this, uh, uh, you know, there, there's, you. there's word out there uh, that. Um, those who sponsor illegal mining also sponsor uh, cattle rustling and some of those clashes between mining communities such that they can take advantage and continue their activities. Is your committee privy to that information when you say it may be associated with insecurity? No, 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 no. I am not saying that that uh, those who are mining or sponsoring mining are also sponsoring cattle rustling. No. What I'm saying is in a, in a situation where there is no organization, in a situation where it is free for all, it is, I mean, an ingredient for insecurity. Anything can happen. Go to any of the artisanal or so-called uh, scavenger mining sites. I mean, the security there, anything can happen. Anybody can take advantage of that loose, disorganized situation. So I am not insinuating that those who are involved in uh, or sponsoring illegal mining are all those. I think that's for the security agencies to look at. What we are saying is this. This problem can be solved 
it can be solved. And I think if the Zamfara state government, with what they are doing now, integrates fully with what the plan of the federal government is concerning plans for the artisanal mining, and there is some honesty, there is real political honesty, and I have to emphasize it, there is real political will, there is honesty on purpose, and there is a way you tackle it scientifically, as it's been stated even in the law, and in the roadmap, this issue can be solved. Even the security in the mining fields or the suspicion that mining contributes to insecurity in Zamfara State can be, can be solved. Number one, I have said the best way to go about it. Who are those who are in the field? Who owns those licenses? Are the license owners themselves aware that wrong people are exploring or mining in their area. If they are not aware... Oh dear, well, we seem to have lost Prof there, but uh, we'll just try and reestablish that connection. But you know, while that went on, there, guys, some of the information out there, which, because um, if you look at countries like DR Congo, for instance, you know, rich country with mineral resources, and then that's full of thought that... Um, you know, you always have faith columnists or elements who sponsor those crises such that they can go in there and take advantage of those resources. So one wonders, could that be far from what is going on in these cases? Because you see consistently when the governor himself in Zamfara has said, look, some of these crises you see, they are political in nature. Mm. We've seen traditional rulers who have been deposed. Some of them have been called out. Some facing the law, the music for being associated or sponsoring some of those things. So it appears as though there is always much more that meets the eye. There's a facade that this is just, uh, you know, cattle rustling and banditry. So there are several articles out there saying, look, you have some of those who are involved in that, who are also involved in uh, illegal money. Well, I think we've got Prof back. So Prof, tell us, well, what, is, what has your committee done now? Uh, in light of all that is going on. What kind of work is going on with that committee? Because if Zamfara State Government has seen any results, as you suggested, they may not have set up this committee in the first instance. I think, I think the Honorable Minister of Mines and Steel Development, I think the Honorable Minister of Mines and Steel Development Ministry will tackle that. And I believe there is some, some kind of activity already going on in that, in that aspect. But I can assure you, what needs to be done now is a kind of synergy. There is, let me say this, the committee has been set up by the Zamfara State Government. But in order for them to succeed, they need to now liaise fully with the Federal Ministry of Mines and Steel Development, especially the... The artisanal mining, and I think the uh, mines inspector division, and I think the honourable minister is, is doing a lot in this direction at the ministry. So, and for a long-term solution, licensing and operations in Zamfara State, it takes also the state governments to cooperate in this direction, and it takes people who are involved. Um, and it takes people who are involved in the uh, in, 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 in Zamfara State and even in the security sector and the ministry. A, a, a lasting solution is this. There has to be organized mining. The Zamfara State government itself, we have said it, and any of the state governments full form what is called the... Uh, uh, what is called, uh, you know, special purpose vehicles, form companies. Let there be organized companies. Allow these companies to operate. Let the task forces also be involved in, what I mean the task forces now, security task forces. There were sometimes this was um, a, a set up within even the ministry where you have people of the NSCDC, where you have people from uh, the police and all that, in the minefields, police in this. Let the mines officer also be involved in this, in monitoring. 
Who are the licensed owners? Who are the big time? Let's now begin to see how we can attract the big time players, whether local or international. Organized mining, it will fizzle out. Um, I mean, this artisanal or scavenger mining will fizzle out. This talk about insecurity, a uh, relationship with uh, cattle rustling, uh, with uh, uh, the legal mining, can be easily solved. So we need to put our heads together. What is the root cause of this? Who are those involved? Let us identify them. Let's do it honestly. Let the political uh, uh, angle, let's look at it honestly. If there is the honesty of purpose, and we really know those who are not supposed to be there, they can easily be flushed out and then protect those who really want to do proper exploration and proper mining. You see, I get so a little bit, um, a bit sad about the situation in Zafara because that is one of the richest states in Nigeria. That is a state potentially that may not even need federal allocation if they get the mining narratives right. If this is done very well, Zamfara State alone can be enough to, I mean, uh, 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 take care of its budget without even relying just, on... Just, just give us a minute. Location. Give us a moment, rather. We'll, we'll go to break and then we'll be back on this subject matter. Stay with us. Well, Professor Kola, you did uh, reference, although in passing, but repeatedly to honesty, political honesty in all of this scenario. Yeah. What's, what's going on with that? What, what, yeah. uh, why do you keep yeah. saying that? Yeah. <laughs> well, look at the situation. Hello? Go ahead, we can hear you. Hello. Now, look at the uh, situation. Who uh, where are these people from? Who where are the people from? Or the legal miners from? They're from the same area. The, the local politicians, the traditional rulers, all the governance structure at the local levels will know them. They are in our lands, they are in the land. And so if the government is also uh, you know um, uh, helpful in really or really serious, and I believe they are, in tackling this issue, then the police have to do it clearly. They cannot succeed without connivance with the people. At many stage or at each level, whether in the traditional set or the landowner something, now say, honestly, we don't well, want well, to uh, allow this in our land. Then it can well, easily well. be solved. For us, state has many companies, which is good. And, oh, sure. Okay, well, you know, again, it just keeps okay. uh, fading Hello? intermittently. And then but, you know, your, your response right feeds people. into... Hello? Yeah, I, I can hear you, Prof. Your response feeds into the narrative yeah. that some politicians are actually behind some of these things going on. <laughs> You're trying to box me to a corner. But oh, it, like it's just what it's... That's how it comes across. Only the but at different levels, there are quite a lot of people... Yeah. If, if there are no people helping them, encouraging them, and they have no support, there won't be uh, any of these things in those areas. No, even anywhere in Nigeria where you have artisanal mining, or sorry, not artisanal, where you have this scavenger mining, I use the word scavenger mining, this disorganized mining. And if you come to my town, let me be very honest with you, and my area, and I see that you are a destructive entity. There is instrumentality of the community. There is instrumentality of the political structure within uh, 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 u
in that area to stop it. So if the political structure can stop it, the instrumentality of the community uh, 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 hierarchy can stop it, then you won't have this issue coming up the land. We want to see serious mining going on here. They won't have Again, we lost prof. Uh, when yeah, when prof. the real miners uh, themselves with the new license, Ooh. hello, yeah, uh, prof. Um, the, the issue at hand is not when the new. real miners themselves, okay, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. as I said, as Jim mentioned, we the, the connection is not quite stable, but uh, we will take as much of what you can give us as possible. The issues on hand is not new, and as you mentioned earlier, it's not restricted to just one state. Uh, Zamfara is just like a hypothesis of what happens in various other, other states across the country. So the issues around illegal mining and all of that is not new. And I want to believe that you know, in the work that you had to do to set up this roadmap, you must have done some historical digging into how far back this problem is and if there is a crux, if there is uh, a foundation to the problem that we can trace. Well, um, if I can uh, say this, going back to history, up till about the 60s or 70s, truth. The Looks like it's one of those days, but uh, we'll, <laughs> well, yeah, but we'll uh, okay. Well, while we try and uh, see if we could get uh, Prof's connection back on, I think we do have uh, a Sunny Abdullah Shinkafi, who is the chairman of for our state anti illegal mining committee. Okay, you got, can, can you hear us now, sir? Hello? Oh, okay, Prof, you're I'm back. I'm hearing you very well. Okay, Prof, uh, just hang on a minute. Let's uh, bring in Mr. Shinkafi. He is the chairman of that Zamfara committee that just been set up. Um, he joins us via Zoom as well. Uh, so, Prof, if you could, if you could just uh, mute, mute your connection such that we could just have him on. Mr. Shinkafi, thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chambali. Okay, so give us a back why this committee was set up because we just heard uh prof saying that uh, well that committee would have been unnecessary because they may just be at cross purposes with what the federal government committee is set out to do having already put in some measures well uh, you see the the illegal mining mining committee set up by the the state governor the Dr. Bello Mohammed Matol Maradun is to checkmate the activities of the illegal miners of freighting in Zamfara State and to track down the unlicensed company that are still going on illegal mining in Zamfara State. And we want to holistically try to reimpose the the ban of mining activities by the federal government's in April 2019. That is the main reason of making sure that the government constitutes an illegal and anti illegal mining activities in Zamfara State. Let me refresh your memory. In the last year, 2020, a couple of Chinese company, Pov National, were arrested by the police in line with the, also in collaboration with the, federal, uh, the state government where some Chinese were, were arrested for violating the, uh, the ban on illegal mining by the federal government, which were also uh, paraded before the newsmen in the police headquarters in Zampara State. So what, we're trying to, what the government was trying to do is to holistically try to collaborate with the federal government to checkmate the excesses of the illegal mining. Because a lot of people are not conversant with the Nigeria Minor Act Regulation 2007, which is an act of the National Assembly. And then that uh, act, the categories of the licenses 
are spelled out in the Mining Regulation Act, those who are entitled to mine. Uh, also, the last one will be grant will be grant by Nigerian Mining Cadastra under the Ministry of uh, Solid Minerals Development. So some miners will get an EL, that's exploration license. The essence of the exploration license is to explore the resources in that mining site to, to authenticate the potential of the mineral deposit. But some people will now take it as a license to, to mine. And that will also an illegal mining. There's small scale mining lease, large scale mining lease, quarry mining lease, and the rest. And also to checkmate the allegation of collaboration between the miners and the unbanditry. But uh, to my own view, the, the paradigm has to, 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 to critically or holistically try to get an intelligence gathering to know whether mining has something to do with the insecurity in the upper state. Because the issue of insecurity her back started with the uh, with the cattle rustling, herdsmen and farmers clashes, and now turned to kidnapping and unbanded trees. So it is on record. The former Minister of Mines and Solid Mineral Development, uh, Dr. Kaede Paimi, will attest to it that when he was a Minister of Mines, there was a, a, a village called Bindin, where 38 artisanal miners were killed in the mining pit, inside the mining pit. So if there is a relationship between the insecurity and the uh, mining activities in the upper state, I think the, 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 the record is there. And what is the, what is the security are being without making sure that they provide the government with adequate intelligence gathering? So the essence of this committee, some people are looking at it as irrelevant, but it's relevant also. Because we want to use the people who are the, who are the sort of the soil on that mining side to find out what is the relationship between illegal mining or mining activities with the insecurity. And from there we now know whether there's a correlation for some of the miners. The problem we're having in the Northwest 80% of the mining site are occupied by artisanal and illegal miners. So I think it's very, very important for the state government to join hand with the federal government to enforce the ban and, and because a lot of revenues and royalties are lost or are going into puzzle out into the hand of these illegal miners and so on, so on some patriotic uh, elites in the state. Um, just to be clear, uh, Mr. Shinkafi, has the ban on mining activities in Zamfara State by the federal government been lifted? The ban has not been lifted and the ban remains in force. So why, but, what but, necessitated the setting up of your committee this June when the ban of January 2019 has not been lifted. Is to checkmate the excesses of those who are plotting of what excesses the, the activities are not even supposed to go on at all. That's I mean a, unless English is failing me here, it means that there should be no mining activities at all. So why the why illegal mining if the ban is permanent? Uh, the ban is still in force. But what I'm trying to say you are in Nigeria, there's a lot of lawless people in this country. And still I have, if I can re refresh my memory, I've said it earlier, some Chinese nationals were arrested last year for, for, for going on with this illegal mining in some process, of the ban by the federal government. And still there is some at law that are some lawless people who have been going on these illegal mining activities. Mm. Well, so Mr. Shekafi, just one moment, just one moment, just, just one moment. Have any arrests been made 
of those who are contravening the federal government directive of a ban on mining activities in Zamfara State? Yes, I have said it earlier. Maybe you have not heard me. I said some Chinese were arrested and paraded by the police before the pressmen, which is on the I, national television. Maybe you are mm. you are correspondent. Are, are, are there? Are there? My question. My question is because but they are yet to be arrested. No, if there are, if those arrests were made, are there mining activities or rather illegal mining activities going on right now in Zamfara states? That is the reason why the committee was set up. If the, the, if the, the illegal mining activities are going on, it is illegal. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't there have been arrests? There has been an arrest. There has been an arrest. And that is the reason why the government is trying to come up with the uh, anti-legal mining activities uh, committee under my humble chairmanship to check my these excesses. Because this forest is very bad. It's a deep forest. Some are places are even risky place for anybody to go. Because you have known for the past eight years, Zampara is under siege of armed banditry before the, the inception of the Lomatole administration. Um, but it has been reduced to the minimum BRS level, up to at least we can say 50 to 65 percent. So that is the reason why the government is trying to collaborate with the federal government to make sure that there's total ban is being enforced. Okay, I, I recall uh, last year when the governor was speaking about uh, uh, certain gold reserve in Zamfara State that will be deposited in banks. Um, so if, if mining has been l banned largely, what happens to that drive really? Because the idea is to raise revenue from that area. So what happens to the artisanal miners whom the governor says were largely responsible for the gold I think about 30 kilograms or thereabouts that was uh, that that we you have so far in that mining reserve what's the thinking around that well precisely if the ban has not been lifted then the axial miners who are also licensed will seek to operate and the gold the reserve also uh flown by the state government has to also cease to exist pending the lifting of the ban and uh, but even the third government has a a mining mining my, uh, a license to purchase and to sell uh, gold can go outside and per se also to buy gold and reserve it as a reserve you understand that's what you call my uh, mining for chase uh, license or my or mining buying center if, if, if the state government still want to get that mining uh, buying center they still have the right to incorporate a company and also buy gold outside the Ampara State as a reserve. You understand? Oh, no, that, because that, that last year being given. Yeah, you say what? Uh, pardon me. So, when the governor said that that gold was largely mined by artisanal miners whose activities are meant to be banned, uh, when did they carry that out? Just to, to be clear on that one, was that gold bought outside when? of the state or artisanal miners in the state? Well, well, I'm not in position to give you that answer because I have not been involved in in acquiring that uh, gold at that time. So the main purpose of our committee is to check out the excesses of illegal mining. So anything to do with the gold reserve or gold ban or anything, that one, I'm not part of it. But what I'm trying to tell you, even if that's even the case, this is the, the activities of the additional mining are banned and are not lifted by the federal government so their operation also cease to exist so also if the state government is going to also buy the gold from a similar manner indigenous indigenous from zampora state so even the, the the issue the plan to go on with the with the gold is that also has to be to be to be keep in in, in, in abeyance so this is it so just quickly before we take this back to prof a hundred thousand artisanal <laughs> miners that's the figure that was given and i'm thinking that's at least a hundred thousand jobs i don't know how many indirect jobs will be created as a result of that so we've talked about insecurity largely being as a result of poverty hunger and the rest so 
literally taking the jobs off the hands of 100,000 people. Aren't you worried that that might even worsen the insecurity that we've seen in recent times? Well, the ban of the uh, Adfel Manor from going on to mine, you are, the federal government is from the out of uh, employment. And you know, when you give an employment uh, to our teaming youth, it's like you scare a society and you have created a wealth. And uh, also uh, improve business activities in that uh, community, in the community, in the mining community side. So when this ban uh, are being enforced and 100,000 miners were thrown out of uh, employment, then the, 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 it is also trying to escalate the insecurity in Zampara State. Because uh, an ideal workshop, workshop is a devil workshop. When these people are thrown out of uh, employment, automatically you, it's an invitation to insecurity, an invitation to poverty, an invitation to the loss of revenue, and any sort of uh, social biases. All right, so Mr. Shinkafi, does this mean that um, those 100,000 artisanal miners are going to get back to work with this committee of yours? How can they cannot go back to work because you know the issue of mining, mining lease or mining activities mm -hmm. is an inclusive lease of our of Nigerian constitution and right. is directly under the supervision of the federal government. If the government has enforced a ban, then the state government has no right whatsoever to lift on the ban. And the ban remained in force pending when the federal government lifted the ban. And we, the committee set up by the state government is to complement and to support the, the, the enforcement of the ban on mining activities. So the, the ban, whether you have a license, a license operator or a license company or your illegal miner, all the money activities have been banned for the past two years and it is only the federal government or mr president who has the, the right to leave the ban judge, judge, so do the you, federal do government you, has no right all right i, 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 I get no that point right if you could ban. just say just briefly on this one do you think that the ease or politicians are fueling insecurity in zanfara also linked to illegal mining? Of course, a lot of that is an allegation. Some top politicians who are in the immediate past government are directly or indirectly involved in illegal mining and aiding and abating ambulatory in Zampara State. It is on record. The vice state chairman of, of APC was arrested for, 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 for allegation of aiding and abating ambulatory. He was arrested by army, he was arrested by DSS, he was arrested by police. And it is yet for this uh, security agencies to make it clear that he is not involved in this allegation of poiling ambulatory in Zampara State. Okay. All right, Prof. Uh, without any apology, without any apology on the line to any politician, because it is on record, and the security agencies and the person will be in witness. And this issue of uh, uh, illegal mining and insecurity are different things, you understand? Because I have sat in a committee which was presided over by former inspector general of police, one of the one of the famous uh, security expert in the history of Nigeria, M. D. Abakar, who is also an individual of Zampara. I sat in that committee as a member of that committee. I knew what is our finding. I knew who are who are part of this issue of insecurity. Some of us traditional rulers, directly or indirectly, are part of this uh, insecurity, and so they are also involved in illegal mining. So this is uh, something that we knew, and we know how to also checkmate those bad eggs in, in, in the forest or in Nigeria in general.
Prof to give us his concluding thoughts as well. Uh, Prof, could you go ahead? I mean, did you get uh, any sense of uh, political honesty, which you spoke about earlier on, having listened to um, oh, yes. Taffy? Oh, 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 yes. Oh, yes, I did. Oh, yes, I did. I did. And I think it buttresses my, uh, my point by saying, look, if we have some political honesty and uh, the political will, the issues can be resolved. And um, I'm quite impressed with uh, what I had Elijah Shinkafi say about their willingness now to tackle this and walk, like I said, they have to walk with the federal government. I, I said the issue of the community is relevant. Let me, let me make a point very clear. Artisanal mining has a place in the Nigerian uh, mining uh, narrative. They have a place. I mean, if you have 100,000 honest artisans that are getting something out of the land under an organized setup, under a controlled setup, then that's a huge thing reducing uh, unemployment. But let's look at it. Who is an artisan? Maybe we need to start from that basic narrative. Uh, I'm afraid, Prof, we're just about to end now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> But I would just, what I would just, what I would just, what I would just suggest for them to do, it's a very simple thing. One, link up with the mining cadastral office company. Who are the miners there? Who are the licensed owners? Who are the legitimate people on ground? When you know those who are legitimate people on ground, it's easy to flush out the fake. And that's now where the political will comes in with the federal government that place can be sanitized. Insecurity can be sorted out within a short time. All and right, then Prof. At some point, mining activity can start in Zamfara State. It's a All potentially right, rich state. We, we do. We thank you. Properly. Thank you very much. Thank All you. right, thank you as well, Professor Gwenga Kwanla and uh, Alaji uh, Sunny Abdullahi Shinkafi. Both of you, gentlemen, thank you for your time this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, well, we do have some feedback coming through now. Well, all right. John Henry jumps right in, talking about illegal mining in Zamfara. And John Henry says, illegal mining can't be stopped until they tackle it thoroughly. Many people are benefiting from this crisis. The locals, the traditional rulers, the political class, etc. Let's be sincere. Government, state and federal level, know what to do to stop these issues. If not, we will continue discussing this issue. Eternity. Eternity? Well, <laughs> wow. Let's hope not. I don't care what it says. Still on illegal mining, by the way. Why is the government always playing catch up? Obviously, there's a correlation between this illegal mining and insecurity in Zamfara State. The federal government has halted mining activities. What have they done to seal the area to prevent it? So, too much audio without. Actions. It was interesting. Without video, right? Without Adenikas. Well, Dr. Imosi says about COVID-19 cases, I believe the point uh, why Nigeria did not record cases as initially predicted in the early days of COVID-19 is, but not limited to, the following. Ah, but not limited to the following, perhaps. There are a number of publications alluding to the fact that the receptor site is 2 via which the virus uses to gain entry into the human host is less prominent among Africans and female foals have less of this compared to males. When you interrogate the NCDC data of confirmed cases, the number of, com the number of positive cases tend more towards male foals. Uh -oh. We're in class this morning. <laughs> Let's go on. What's the second point? Yeah, the second point. Also, previous exposure to SARS-CoV-2 has been reported to confirm a possible cross immunity against SARS-CoV-2. This was published in Nature last year, 2020. Many Nigerians may be exposed already due to the kind of animals we eat. Uh -oh. And the third one, a recent study in Greece hinted the possible role of BCG vaccination as a possible protection against SARS-CoV-2. BCG vaccine is active for 15 years and over a period of 60 years to protect against TB. By extension, this may well be active in our young age demographic. The, issues in, the issue in Nigeria is we are not interrogating the science properly and our research arm of the pandemic is really weak. This is where we should lay more emphasis. 
Uh, I think that the bottom line at the end of the day, research. Um, Andrew Ackman actually has this one, censorship of social media, control of internet and media content. And he says there is nothing to chair about the introduction of such policies at this time. This is a beginning of dictatorship. Just wait and see. But my advice is not to wait and see, but for stakeholders to look beyond the less publicized, hushed, horrid public hearing and do the needful. Search around the world. Countries with media content control are those with iron-fisted leaders. It is not every policy dished out, especially in such a hurry, that should be accepted and swallowed hook, line and sinker. Let stakeholders interrogate why the policy is being introduced now. And I think this last one is from uh, uh, Nze Tochuku and talking about voting sites as well. Uh, we won't be able to take it now, but we will certainly... Okay, well, that's it on the... Pff, sorry. <laughs> no, we can't talk about that in seconds. <laughs> but not to worry. Tomorrow, because there's so many more meals. I see one um, on tinted glass, and I think there's something that we need to get a little more explanation on, especially if citizens are being harassed uh, with the policy, which is not quite clear on the tinted glass uh, uh, permits. But let us see how that goes. Thank you so much for watching today. I'm Maupe Ogunyusuf. I'm Kyle Okikiri. I'm Ayo Makine. Have a wonderful day. I'm Chamberlain Osa. Goodbye.